Hey fellow the uh, steam enthusiasts, uh, a quick video on this uh, LGB15, which is a well McLean product. It's an atmospheric uh, gas-fired boiler that uh, we've worked on over the years. Um, and it's essentially an at a atmospheric boiler. And there's our focus. Uh, it's two smaller boilers sort of, but when you get this large, uh, you have this huge burner tray, uh, which has its own separate um, flame control system. Uh, we've had to upgrade this at some, at certain points because what will happen is half the boiler will fire and the other half won't. A um, couple of control upgrades. This is on a uh, two pipe uh, vapor system. Um, there's your uh, McDonald Miller 150 uh, pump control. Uh, it's got uh, a lot of dirt and rust. I think we can see the meniscus there. We've got the sight glass blow down, but it still uh, collects rust. Um, uh, gas main has a unnecessary uh, pressure reducer there. Has a Shipco feeder. Uh, boiler feed tank, which is really not the way to go on um, on these old systems, be, even though the boiler is very large, because this is just an Achilles heel. Uh, it's starting to rust out. We've replaced that pump uh, once, but this thing is, um, who knows how long this tank's going to last in the condition it's in. It's got a master trap there, and probably one of the biggest return return traps or return pumps I've seen in a while. Um, that should be removed. It's not doing anything. In fact, it's slowing up the water return. So you got two check valves here, and that's how this thing used to work in the day. That's a whole nother video in and of itself. But if we were to remove these two and just return this to gravity return, uh, the system would work a whole whole heck of a lot better. It's massively oversized, uh, this boiler. And there's where the uh, air vent is. We've got a big uh, trap acting as a uh, uh, air vent to, uh, if any steam gets in the dry return, uh, that'll shut there. This probably was a wet return at one time, but it's now a dry return. It's kind of slowing things up. Again, it's a fairly uh, complicated system. I don't want to... Uh, belabor the point. One of the main problems of this situation is that the um, it's got this really awful welded header. So you've got a loop there. That's where it comes out. There's a loop there. It's not even close to what it should be as far as the uh, piping outlet is concerned because there's no stress relief. What happens is the boiler starts out cold. The header, which is steel, welded steel, as I said before, it starts out cold. The boiler fires and the boiler expands, but the header is still cold and acts like a clamp, um, putting stress on the uh, the section seals, which are rubber. Um, then when the steam is finally created, uh, the steam starts moving out both sides. It's a collider header uh, producing probably some wet steam. Um, in in this area here because it's uh, you got steam and water flow this way and steam and water flow that way. There's the, uh, I guess that's an equalizer line and there's the return there. But um, what tends to happen now is this steel will expand more than the cast iron and then will tend to move in that direction, putting stress in the opposite direction and probably uh, shortening the life of this of this boiler um, and then there's your king valve and then into your uh, supply uh, steam supply the returns were not we're not done uh, very well you can see that this there's a trap here which is fine and then uh, there's a drip here and then it goes downhill and then uphill again when you do that, when you don't have a proper pitch on these returns, it tends to hold up water. Of course, there's a check valve there, which is like, why? 